Stanley Kubrick's The Shining can be interpreted in countless ways. There's the moon landing cover-up, the Native American genocide, the Minotaur's maze, the 1919 World Series allegory. But do you recall the most hidden theories of all? The Shining is actually a Christmas movie. Beautiful place. You and Danny are going to love it. <laughs> Most people watching The Shining don't realize just how Christmassy it actually is. I'm intrigued. Good morning, hon. Our analysts spent weeks poring over every frame. And this is what we found. You are not going to believe this. Well, let's just wait and see. Now, if we know anything about Stanley Kubrick, it's his obsession with color. And what two colors represent Christmas? Red and green. But these color motifs are obvious, and there's so much more to unwrap. Boy, I bet you we could really have a good party in this room, huh? Just bear with us for a sec. One of the most strict criteria for a Christmas movie is that it needs to take place during Christmas. At 57 minutes, we see our last title card indicating the day, Wednesday. At 1 hour 35 minutes and 50 seconds, we begin Thursday at 8 a.m. And what day did Christmas land on in 1980 when The Shining was released? Over half of the film takes place on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Still not convinced. What about this scene when Jack wakes up in the pantry? See anything of interest? Behind Jack's head is a bag of holly brand salt, which would be a simple coincidence if the holly plant wasn't such a staple of Christmas iconography. And what about this early scene as the Torrance family drives up to the Overlook? Their conversation turns to the ill-fated Donner party. Hey. Wasn't it around here that the Donner Party got snowbound? I think that was farther west in the Sierras. People always assume this is just foreshadowing the horrors that await them. But that's just to distract you from the truth. Donner is, in fact, one of Santa's reindeer. Well, Donner, where's the new member of the family? Yeah, yeah. So sorry, sir. What other Christmas time symbols and imagery can we find? What about the drink that Grady spills on Jack at the party? That's all right. Uh, I've got plenty of jackets. Grady's oh. Advocat, so he tends to stain. Advocat is a traditional Dutch beverage made from eggs, sugar, and brandy. Sounds a bit like eggnog, doesn't it? And what alcohol do we typically use in eggnog? Red rum. And what do we eat on Christmas? Some people eat turkey. So, what do we find in the freezer? 15 rib roasts, 30 10 pound bags of hamburger, we got 12 turkeys. Wait, hold on. 12 turkeys? We got 12 turkeys? As in the 12 days of Christmas? But if you think this is the only reference to the Yuletide power of the number 12, you don't know Stanley Kubrick. What's the most famous room at the Overlook Hotel? That's right, room 237. Calculators out. What is two plus three plus seven? Exactly. Now you might be saying that we need at least one Christmas tree to make this a Christmas movie. Well, are you forgetting the very first shot? Pause. Enhance. Enhance. It was right in front of us the whole time. Honestly, we can't make this stuff up. If you thought Eyes Wide Shut was Kubrick's only Christmas movie, you'd be wrong. With its endless symbolism and ambiguity, one thing is certain, The Shining is bursting with holiday cheer. Run, run, Rudolph! Run, I'll make you far behind! What other clues have you found that prove 
The Shining is a Christmas movie? Let us know what we missed in the comments. Merry Christmas and happy holidays from everyone here at Studio Binder. <laughs>